One of the struggles of being a Norse pagan in this modern world is definitely our lack of information and how much that affects every aspect of our personal practices and even our lives. So when it comes to being a Norse pagan, many of us can create some form of basic practice to start out with, but what happens when you've been practicing for a long time? What about for a few months? What about for a year? Where do you go after that? Back in the day, there would have been people to kind of guide you where to go if you wanted to follow a different pathway, if you wanted to learn more about the runes. You would have had someone in your village or in your area that would have been an expert at the runes or a master who would have taught you those things. The same goes for shamanic practices or even druid practices or anything like that. You would have had someone to go to. But the sad reality of it is, is the chain was broken. We lost hundreds of generations of pagan knowledge just simply because there's not anyone practicing it. Now there are still a few holdouts around the world that do have knowledge and information that are still passed down orally. But for someone getting into this path that doesn't have anyone nearby, it can be really hard to learn from other people because you just simply don't have them. So that's why this video exists. I want to talk with you and share with you the different pagan pathways you can take after you become a Norse pagan. Now I should say that I didn't come up with all these on my own. I did take to Instagram and ask the community, the broader heathen world, what they thought the various pathways were. And so I came up with quite a few of them myself, but there are quite a few subgroups and ones I didn't think about. And you know, all these things, I mean, a lot of these things I don't know a lot about, but again, I just wanted to make sure you are aware of them so that you can start exploring them if you're interested. And all these have varying degrees of information with them. Otherwise it's people just exploring these paths and doing what they can with it and then recording what they're experiencing experiencing as well. So of course the first one you think about when you are becoming a Norse pagan, and this is something many people dabble in, but few actually dive deeper enough to actually call themselves like runologists, but the runes are something that many people go down, the path that people go down, because they're very prominent. They're all across the faith. But I've talked about this quite a bit in my channel before, about my struggles personally with the runes, because a lot of the information we have about them um, comes from a very modern time and isn't actually based on anything historic. Now, having said that, there are so many different rune books, and I would say, if anything, of all the different pathways we're gonna talk about today, this is the one you can find the most information about. So my basic understanding of rune working is essentially you're just trying to unlock the secrets of the runes, and so many people have been doing this for hundreds of years now, um, going all the way back as far as written works, you know, a long time. Uh, but most notably in the 1800s, runology became very prominent. Now again, this intermingled quite a bit with tarot and other forms of divination that all kind of came together. So it can be hard to figure out what information actually fits to a heathen kind of path. Now, of course, like I've already mentioned, shamanism is the next one I want to talk about here. And this is, I mean, obviously one that uh, extends outside of the heathen realm a lot. And that's where you get the majority of your information as well, uh, from South America, Siberia, uh, North America. And then, I mean, we do know that like the Sami people practice some form of shamanism as well. And then we do know the Norse people did as well. Uh, it's just hard to say to what extent they did. But uh, there is, you know, shamanic practices all around the world, and they're all very similar, which is what I find interesting about it. And so the majority of the books I have are all from uh, South American shamanism uh, or North American shamanism. But there are a few out there uh, written about specific Norse shamanism. So again, very interesting reads, and I'm really looking forward to creating a, a larger video talking about shamanic pra practice. But for now, if you're wanting to learn more about it, the best way to do it is check out Highline. Highlong does very shamanic based music and very shamanic based, um, you know, like rituals. And so, you know, a song like Alfader Haitir is very shamanic. And so I definitely would recommend checking that out if you want to get into, at least feel what it is like. But uh, the thing I should say about this and why I've struggled to make a video about it is this is one in particular uh, that having a teacher for, I think is very important, but finding a teacher for it is what is difficult. The one that actually cares and is actually you know, done the right lessons and things like that. There's a lot of self-proclaimed shamans, and I definitely do not proclaim myself a shaman. I practice, sh I practice shamanism. I try to learn from it, but by no means am I a shaman. Uh, and so that's, again, yeah, one of the struggles with it is, you know, there are a lot of people who are claim they're shamans and they're not, and they're just kind of fooling you. So it, it, it's very hard and it's, it's a, a touchy subject at times, honestly, uh, but I'm looking forward to exploring it more and sharing it with you. 
So these next two I want to talk about, I have trouble talking about just because I don't really know that much about them, but I wanted to bring them up in this video because it is paths people can follow. And it does seem to be prominently for women as far as Sather magic, but men do practice Sather as well. Uh, and there seems to be titles for these things. From my understanding, which is there is Volva, which is a practicer of Sather, and then a Vitki is also a practicer of Sather, who's a male. Uh, so there definitely seems to be uh, the Sather path in general, the magic path. Uh, you know, and these seem to be the specific Norse paths that you can take. However, these definitely seem to float around the same areas as some forms of witchcraft. But again, there, yeah, this is where it gets kind of complicated and there's not, you know, I'm, I'm right next to a river and there might be magic. Let's call this river magic and there might be streams that come off of it. One's called Sather, one's called witchcraft and they may intermingle at times. Uh, and then there's one that comes between them that's, you know, vulva training and then there's Vitki training. And so they're all coming from the same waters, but they have different avenues as well. I think that's the good way to put it. <laughs> but ultimately, uh, again, I just want to introduce these things to you so you can go down your path and understand there are many different pathways you can take. Uh, but I'm very much looking forward to having people to talk about these things that are far more educated in these things than I am and have way more experiences. Uh, so yeah, I think that's enough about that because I, I've been rambling for a while. I want to learn more, but I just want to let you know about these. Now this next one is one that was actually brought to my attention by members of the community because it's something I forgot, but uh, being a crafter in the community, being a crafter in Norse paganism, uh, you know, learning blacksmithing, uh, learning how to sew, learning how to make drums, uh, learning how to make things out of bones, uh, rune carvings on things like that, uh, can definitely be a path that many people take uh, and many people make a career out of as well. Uh, you know, it might not necessarily be seen as a spiritual path on paper, but if you are practicing a lot of these things like such as rune work in there uh, and honoring animals and things like that and creating spiritual devices such as rattles and drums then definitely it fits into a spiritual path and uh, people who are good with their hands I'm I am slightly good at crafting but by no means am I good enough uh, to definitely say it's a, a spiritual path for me but I definitely bl blend spirituality and crafting into like my garb and things like that it's something we definitely want to do as a community is have community fairs where we have our local craftsmen come together and you know just really introduce ourselves to the community invite Norse pagans in and so we can share our wares and things like that. I definitely am a big proponent of supporting your local artist, uh, especially your community artist. Now, I did have on here specifically as well um, as far as witchcraft in general, because just because I know so many people in this community um, who are Norse pagan, they say they're Norse pagan, but then they practice some form of witchcraft as well on the side. Now, it seems like most of these people come from a Wiccan background and that also practice witchcraft, and then when they become Norse pagan, they're still practicing witchcraft. Again, this is where it gets kind of muddy and hard to talk about, uh, but it does seem to be a lot of people follow the more modern idea of what witchcraft is, as well as practicing Norse paganism as well. The next one I have on my list to talk about is being a scald or scaldic works or just poetry in general. This is something that I think we need to see more of in our modern Norse pagan heathen world just because it's, I mean, literally almost all of our information comes in the form of poetries that, uh, that were written down by scalds. Uh, scalds were an important part of, you know, Viking and, uh, you know, Neolithic pagan society of people telling tales that traveled around and wrote poems about great kings and heroes and the gods. Uh, you know, how many songs have been lost throughout time because they weren't written down. And, and now here we are living in an age where we can record videos, where we can write down our works so easily and share them around the world. So being a scald and being a poet or just a writer in general, I think it's something that's very important. It can be seen as very spiritual that I think we need more of uh, in the, the greater heathen world. Uh, I don't think there can be enough poets in the world. I think they record a, a beautiful way, uh, you know, using words to describe the beauty of this world or is it, such a human thing uh, and a very pagan thing too. I added this on my list right next to Scald, which was a scholar. Uh, so this is something we all have to be a little bit, but it's definitely a route that some people take as far as going to get the formal education, uh, which, you know, to an American especially can be quite difficult because not every university, uh, barely any universities, offer a, like, uh, you know, Iron Age Scandinavian course or a degree in it. Uh, and, you know, you can get a medieval history degree in some places, at least near here in Kentucky, there is basically nothing. So to actually go down this path and, and pursue the knowledge base, the scholar side of all of this is a path that you can take. Uh, and it's one that requires a lot of commitment. Now, the thing that is nice about this, once you get find a program 
you know, you're in it. And then the, it's guided, uh, you're educated, you know, you're taught a lot of things. Uh, and it's a little bit more trustworthy, I'd say, than finding a random shaman online and learning from them. Now, the reason I think that this is a pagan type of path is simply because of Odin. I mean, Odin was a knowledge seeker, was uh, going around the world to gain wisdom and then share that wisdom. Uh, and so it can really honor Odin to go around and just gather as much knowledge and wisdom as you can. Um, and I would definitely say I feel very connected to Odin when I actually dive deep into a writing, uh, just like I did in that Gragas Laws. You know, I bought that book just for a few lines in there, but I learned a lot just from those few lines. Thank you so much for joining me for this video so far. And if you're enjoying it, please think about liking and subscribing and all that good YouTuber stuff. Uh, and if you really like the content here at The Wisdom of Odin, please think about donating to Patreon. It is the only way I'm able to do this full time and I offer a range of benefits as well, including our community discord, live streams, early access videos, and a new book supporter tier where you get to learn about the book I am writing and you get a signed copy when it is done as well, hopefully in the later fall. But we have just launched our GoFundMe campaign for our community because we are building the hall. I say it all the time, I say until the hall, and we're actually doing it. Uh, now, this isn't something that you can just snap your fingers and make happen, so we're gonna need a lot of help doing it. Uh, so if you wanna head down to our community website and see how you can help us, uh, it'd be much appreciated, and hopefully we can have a hall done very soon so we can have gatherings in a place with permanence that we can continue to honor these old ways. Again, thank you so much for whatever support you're able to provide the Wisdom of Odin or the Fellowship of Northern Traditions. With that, let's get back to the video. Now this next one I want to bring up is definitely modern in the sense that it's picked up a lot of popularity in the Western world, the American world, uh, and even the European societies, is, is yoga as a practice, uh, as a spiritual practice. Now obviously this comes from a very long line of uh, so things that I don't fully understand and comprehend as far as having origins in our ancient world and coming into our modern world, uh, but it definitely seems like a lot of people take yoga as a practice and then morph it with uh, other things such as Norse paganism, which I, argue, I would argue is fairly modern. From what I understand, people will do a yoga session that is themed towards certain deities or certain energy works. Uh, so energy working and yoga and then, you know, uh, acupuncture and all this stuff. Uh, it was brought up several times in the Instagram poll, so it's not something I necessarily know a lot about, but again, it's something I'm interested in exploring and something that I have observed in our modern heathen world is a lot of people talking about uh, health and wellness and things such as yoga when it comes to the faith today. Now we've entered the subcategory of a lot of things that people brought up and I didn't think about, but I don't know if it's necessarily a pathway, but I wanted to share with you. Uh, in particular, the warrior path was brought up quite a bit. Uh, now, what makes sense to me is if you're in the military, if you're in the armed service of some kind, uh, and you're going into war and you're getting deployed, connecting with the gods in a warlike way is definitely something that is not common. It's not something that people, uh, you know, the majority of us will do. And so it is a very unique thing and something that um, has its own research, has its own practice, and definitely can have its own rituals, which I will be exploring in a video as well here coming up uh, as far as a battle rite uh, that we recently performed for someone uh, getting deployed here in the community. And then you have the things tied to this, such as the berserkir, the shapeshifters, uh, you know, the shapeshifters of Odin who would take aspects of the bear, uh, the wolf, and, you know, and take those into battle. So there's definitely a lot here, and I'm actually, again, going to be making a video on shapeshifters and berserkir here in the future as well. Uh, but it definitely seems to be a path that you can follow um, if you're in the military and armed services. I, you know, I don't know how much it is valuable to someone who isn't, but I have done very primal rituals as well. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a path. And then one I kind of slid in here to kind of counteract that as well is the wanderer lifestyle or being a nomad. It's definitely something that a few people in our community do, uh, which is just travel all the time uh, and meet people from around the world. Again, it's not necessarily a path, but it, it is a lifestyle choice. Uh, you know, deciding to travel or, you know, even live in a van. There's a lot of people in our community uh, that are wanting to live in a van and just travel around the country and go to various places, uh, which again is a very popular modern practice, but people are blending that with the faith today. And then another thing on here as well is just just the like homeliness is being a good host or keeping a good home uh, and this is something that was brought up a lot in that poll as well as people say you know keeping uh, raising children in a heathen way or keeping a household maintained in a, in a heathen or a Viking way uh, for people who are stay-at-home parents who are you know or homesteaders uh, can be something they can focus on as well again it, it's getting very nuanced here but it, it definitely seems to be a path that you can follow as well and then lastly the thing I kind of put on here because I got a lot of people in the poll that mentioned specific deities uh, and that just makes sense is that if you want to commit yourself to learning from a specific deity um, or most commonly known as a matron patron relationship it definitely can be a pathway as well uh, so 
There are so many different paths you can take. That's why this video exists, is to show you the many different pathways that you can take being a Norse pagan. I actually forgot to mention herbalism when I was looking back at my notes and talking with Kevin, who's actually holding the camera right now. And uh, herbalism is basically the study, from what I understand, of plants and learning their uh, properties as far as healing herbs um, and other things that they can do for you. I mean, considering I love tea so much and see the healing property of tea, um, herbalism is definitely something that you can get into um, if you're looking for more paths to follow as far as North paganism and heathenry or even paganism in general. I really didn't know what to call this video when I first started working on it and getting the script for it, and it's definitely going to be something that's a project. I've done this before with the Norse God series where I wanted to start researching something. So this is something that I want to start researching for Norse pagans everywhere uh, so that you can know more about the different pagan pathways that are out there. So please make sure you're notified when my videos come out because I will be having those experts on, or at least people that are more knowledgeable, so that we can talk about the different pagan pathways, starting with Norse paganism and shamanism, which should be coming up very soon. But thank you so very much for watching this video, and again, I hope it was helpful for you. But otherwise, until the haul, it's gone.